how to create a gradient strip pattern in Photoshop. I'm using CC220, but you could use 219, 218, etc. All this is going to be created on a layer, so a layer and new layer. Click OK after giving it a name. And I'm going to use a selection. I'm going to create the selection in the on the left side, just against the side of the document. Just go down, create it a thin set, maybe a 20th or a 40th or whatever of the current document. And what I want to do is create a selection that's going to be twice the size. But before I do that, I'm going to go to the gradient tool. I'm going to select a basic gradient, grayscale gradient. You don't have to use grayscale. I'm just using grayscale because it's nice for the color randomization. I'm using linear and I'm using blending mode of normal. And draw it, drag it from top to bottom or the other way around, up to you. Or a number of variants if you want. Maybe create multiple gradients within that using the blending modes. So you've got that gradient now. It's all the way through that thin strip. What you can do, you can use selections. And because I'm going to resize that section, make it twice the, the width. So select menu and transform selection. If you've got the guides on, you can easily move that selection adjacent to the current gradient strip. So it will be exactly the same size and right next door to the gradient. With the selection controls on, you can resize the selection, make it twice the size of the original strip. So you've now got the gradient and the background. One half has the gradient, one half has the current color of the background. I'm going to delete that background. The white background will go. But it's on a layer, so what you can do, you can go to the Layers panel. And you can go to the, that's Window and Layers. And what you can then do, you can go to the background. And you can delete it. So yes, once you click that uh, trash can or bin or what you want to call it, you have a gradient on one side, you've got transparency on the other side of the selection. I'm creating a uniform gradient strip, but you don't have to do that. You could create all kinds of variations of those strips, maybe four, five, etc., in the pattern. But you can then define it as a pattern via the Edit menu and Pattern. So it's now saved as a preset. Now you can go to Select and Deselect and then just use that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a fresh document or use the History panel. Unfortunately, what's happened is left a new layer. Ignore that, it doesn't matter. So Layer and New Layer, click OK. That's the key thing. So you've got now one layer that you can work with, and that's going to be with the fill. So edit menu and fill. Make sure its content is patterns, pattern, and the custom pattern is the one that you've just created, the gradient you've just created. Also make certain the script is on. I always deselect it and select it back on again because Photoshop does have a tendency to ignore that otherwise, and set it to brick fill. Click OK. I would totally ignore the preview. It doesn't match it at all. So go for one, zero, zero, one, one, and rotate angle of zero. And now that's going to be a key one in the next thing. So click OK. So you've got your gradient designs. You can see the strips just going down, different colors. Now I could of course use the other layer that's there, but I'm just going to show you create another layer. Because you could just fill it and apply it to the current layer, but that's not so effective. So layer and new layer. I always like to add fills to a layer. Makes it easier to delete or modify it. If you apply it to a single layer, it's very hard to change. Edit and fill, and once you've done that, use exactly the same as before. And I suggest again that you click 
the script on and off. I know it sounds odd, but it does seem like say sometimes Photoshop just ignores that and just runs the standard regular pattern to build. Again, you can see design. Now, this is the thing you want to change. Go to the pattern rotate angle. Instead of zero, put 180. So it flips it over, rotates. Then you've got your design there. You can see now you've got the black to, and then obviously go down the other one, black and up to a lighter color at the end, at the start, or the top, I should say. So you've got two layers now, but you might want to change the colors because at the moment, I mean, it's, it's quite nice there, but they're all equal colors. So what you can do, of course, because they're on layers, separate layers, you can go to the either layer and then just use image menu and adjustments and maybe hue and saturation, change the colors, change the hue, change the saturation, maybe make it grayscale, desaturate it, change the lightness, colorize it, up to you. But they just then become different colors instead of all the same colors all the way across. But it depends what you want from your design. So you've got your two layers now. Of course, what you could also do, you can, with those layers, you can go to one of those layers and you can apply effects to it. You can also go to layer menu and smart objects and convert to a smart object. So the whole thing now is a smart object. And you can apply effects to that, of course. What you can also do is you can go to edit and transform and maybe use distort or perspective or warp. Or you could use adjustments, of course, image menu and adjustments as well to recolor it. You could duplicate that layer as well. That's another thing you could do. So you can have multiple copies of it. So you just go to the Move tool, hold down the Alt or Option key, and drag. So you've got two. You can resize that, of course. You place it like that, if you wish. Or you can rotate it, angle it in different ways. Maybe have them together like that. You could just put it up. So you've got vertical and horizontal together. Resize them. You can also use blending modes. You can resize it to fill the whole thing. Of course, it works probably better if you've got a document that's a thousand by thousand and not something that's obviously rectangular. So normal blending mode, not really zero, I say 50%, I would say, for opacity, maybe. Uh, difference, set difference is the blending mode. Maybe multiply, overlay. So you can create a lovely, unusual gradient design there. You can also go to the 3D menu and use a variety of 3D commands. Or go to the filter menu and use blur, etc. Or liquify. Apply the brush stroke in all kinds of ways to distort the design. Change the size of the liquify brush. Once you're happy with all your changes, click OK. Of course, there's many other filters you can use as well. And you can always remove that, of course. That's one good thing about smart filters. You can always remove it at any point. So image menu, hue saturation, color lookup, HDR toning, up to you. Maybe go for blue tone, gold crimson, and click OK. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always have new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, and many others. Please add a comment or two. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.